Hello and welcome to the wonderful Church of St Denis in York. Worshippers and visitors have been drawn to this holy place for centuries. Some come to view the magnificent 12th century great doorway that you can see behind me. Others are attracted by the church's extraordinary collection of medieval stained glass, but few realise just how many treasures, both old and new, lie within. The subject of this presentation is the church's most recent acquisition, an 1879 Father Willis organ. Music has always been highly valued by the congregation here at St Denis, so it is right that we should start with some brief notes about the church's musical history. We know that congregations worshipping at St Denis during the Middle Ages would have seen, if not necessarily heard, at least three musical instruments on a regular basis, because this early 13th century window contains depictions of a portative organ, psaltery, and hurdy-gurdy. I don't know exactly when St Denis first acquired a pipe organ, but there must have been one present at the time of the English Civil War, because the church wardens were compelled to sell it after the Siege of York in 1644, and use the money to repair the church and its windows. Jumping forward to the 19th century, Robert Postel of York built a fine 14-stop organ on a gallery under the church tower in 1857. Several talented local musicians are known to have played this instrument, including William Harris, who was appointed in 1865, Elias Coultate, appointed in 1867, and James Hugh Reginald Dixon, who was appointed shortly before his 15th birthday in 1901. During his tenure as organist of St Denis, James Hugh Reginald Dixon composed a small amount of music, including the Gronke in D for organ that you can see here, and an anthem entitled Praise for Redemption, which he dedicated to the choir of St Denis. My predecessor as president of the YDOA, Joan Johnson, had lessons from Dr Dixon, as he later became, during his tenure as organist of Lancaster Cathedral, a post he held from 1909 until 1971. In conversation with Joan towards the end of his life, Dr Dixon recalled the occasion when he bought an E-flat clarinet during his youth, took it along to St Denis, and played it to the somewhat confused congregation who thought that their postal organ had gained a new stop. Robert Postel returned to restore his organ at St Denis in 1879. Thirty-two years later, in 1911, the instrument was moved onto a new gallery. Unfortunately, I have yet to come across a photograph of the Postel organ, but I'm sure one exists somewhere. Thomas E. Hughes of Bradford built a new 14-stop organ for St Denis in 1925. With tubular pneumatic action throughout, octave and sub-octave couplers, and an early 20th century tonal scheme, this new instrument clearly acknowledged contemporary trends. In 1978, John Scott Whiteley, current president of the YDOA, recorded the Hughes organ at St Denis for a cassette entitled Organ Music from York. We will now hear a verset in F by Alexandre Guimont from that recording. <laughs> Thank you. 
In the organ music from York cassette liner notes, John Scott Whiteley wrote that he had been, quote, accompanied by the pedals of the as yet unrestored organ of St. Denis, and that the piece became affectionately known during a recording as the Stick Dance. John has since told me that he very nearly abandoned the 1978 recording session. Unfortunately, this turned out to be just the beginning of the Hughes organ's decline. Later in the 20th century, the Hughes organ received some ill-advised tonal alterations, and some of its pipework was damaged in an attempt to replicate the effects of open-foot voicing. By the time I moved to York in 2010, several ranks of pipes were in very poor condition, and the instrument's tubular pneumatic action was failing. You can see some of the internal damage in these photographs. At the beginning of my two-year presidency of the YDOA in 2017, the Hughes organ, affectionately known by some as Daisy, was still used every week for services, but the instrument was becoming increasingly unreliable. I offered to help the Reverend Jane Natras and the St Denis PCC explore their options. Owing to financial constraints, we realised that the only viable solution was a community organ project led by volunteers. Jane suggested that the YDOA might perhaps consider leading such a project, and I was amazed by the response that we received. Fifteen YDOA members immediately subscribed to the St Denis Organ Project to help improve our finances, and over 40 YDOA members later volunteered their services on site. Towards the end of 2017, we were made aware of a redundant instrument that might serve as a replacement for the Hughes organ at St Denis. Originally built by Henry Father Willis in 1879 for St Ebb's Church in Oxford, this instrument had been overhauled in 1950 and slightly altered in 1976 by Percy Daniel & Co. You can see the instrument in its original home here. Over a four-day period in December 2017, some of our volunteers collected the Willis organ, which had been kindly donated to St Denis by the PCC of St Ebbs, from the workshop of Gorn and Gorn Organ Builders in Newcastle. As you can see, the instrument had been largely reassembled in the workshop to save space. This meant that we were even able to play the organ briefly before dismantling it. We began by carefully removing the instrument's 47 facade pipes. 22 of those pipes belonged to the Great Open Diapason, 10 to what is now known as the Great Viola, 8 to the Great Dulciana, and 7 to the Great Principal. In these photographs, you can see the C-sharp side of the Great Division, swell reed resonators, and pedal borden pipes. The instrument originally had both swell and great concussion bellows, but these had recently been removed. Although the Willis organ only has a four-stop swell division, its swell box is still remarkably heavy. Once the swell box was out of the way, we began to dismantle the casework. Here you can see Tim, one of our volunteers, preparing himself for the final challenge of lifting both soundboards. We had originally hoped to store the Willis organ at St Denis itself, but this proved impossible because of the church's extremely important North Isle restoration. Fortunately, the Reverend Dr Rowan Williams, Anglican chaplain to the University of York at the time, and now presenter of Peterborough Cathedral, generously allowed us to use her garage. We were, and remain, most grateful to Rowan for this selfless act of kindness. I should also add that the Reverend Jane Natras kindly agreed to store the sliders and soundboards in her study, so that they would be less affected by changing external temperatures. Jumping forward in time now to September 2018, here you can see photographs of the 12 volunteers responsible for dismantling St Denis's extremely dirty Hughes organ. We discovered while dismantling the case of the Hughes organ that its four crocketed pinnacles had been significantly altered on site by the original builders. Presumably, someone had incorrectly measured the available height. As we did not have the necessary width at St Denis to accommodate the Willis pipe rack, it was decided that the Hughes case should be retained and adapted for use with the new organ. 
most of the Hughes pipes were given to a French organ builder for possible reuse elsewhere, but there was quite a lot of badly damaged pipe work. We even discovered that the original Hughes Voix Celeste rank, long since removed, had simply been swept underneath the reservoir. By the end of September 2018, the Hughes organ had been totally dismantled. We then left the organ loft completely empty so that it could be redecorated and cleaned before returning in May 2019 with most of the Willis organ. As you can see, the unpacked instrument occupied quite a lot of space. The next step involved cleaning the organ's keyboards and stop heads before sending them to a specialist for restoration and re-engraving. In order to finance this, we converted the Hughes organ stop heads into key rings and sold them to our supporters. We then re-leathered the pallets and glued them into place with animal glue. During this process, one of our volunteers was particularly pleased to discover that the craftsman who made these pallets had left us his initials and the date. We then began the painstaking task of cleaning everything. When the swell soundboard was ready, we safely lifted it into position with the assistance of some rather ingenious equipment. But there was no way of completely avoiding manual labour. Manoeuvring the four-stop swell soundboard turned out to be a relatively straightforward task in comparison to moving its eight-stop great counterpart. It was such a relief to us all when both soundboards reached their final resting places. Here is a photograph of the reassembled swell box and a later shot of its pipework. For a direct comparison, here is the much larger great division. Putting the console together was a relatively straightforward process, but we did have to make a new platform for the pedal board because the old one had completely worn out. I was pleased to discover that reassembling the action was surprisingly therapeutic work. As soon as the organ was mostly playable, albeit far from finished, we invited a few musical friends to see our progress. It was a particular joy to welcome the composers Andrew Carter and Francis Jackson. As you can see, David, one of the organists at St Denis, decided that he could not pass up the opportunity of having some music signed by its composer. Before we move on, it would be remiss of me not to mention one of the particularly remarkable recollections that Dr Jackson shared with us during his visit. Some of you may know that the window shown here was given to St Denis in 1877 by James Melrose, Lord Mayor of York from 1876 to 1877. Born in 1828, James Melrose lived to be just over 100 years old, but did you know that Francis Jackson sang as a chorister at his funeral in 1929? What a remarkable link to the past. Although still not quite finished, the Willis organ was used liturgically for the first time on Sunday the 8th of December 2019. We had always intended to seek the services of a specialist voicer for final regulation and tonal finishing at St Denis, but our plans had to be temporarily suspended when the COVID-19 pandemic took hold. Fortunately, Joost de Boer, the managing director of William Drake Limited, was finally able to undertake this important second phase of the project at the beginning of 2021. We would not have been able to secure Joost's services without a generous grant from the John Pilling Trust, and for that we are all extremely grateful. Thanks to the dedicated team of organ builders and volunteers who worked so tirelessly here at St Denis, we can now hear this wonderful Willis organ in all its glory.
Ladies and gentlemen, I thought I would leave the opening of this evening's online meeting to Max, but I would like to extend a very warm word of thanks to him for presenting uh, this evening's talk about a fascinating organ we now have in St Dennis Church, which of course was largely due to the efforts of Max and all those others that helped him. Many thanks, and many thanks to James Ratcliffe for making the recording. Many thanks also to Robert Sharp, to Ben Morris and Keith Wright for doing their recording. It's a great pleasure to have heard the organ played in such an expert way. The next meeting of the YDOA will also be online on May the 15th when we shall have an interview with the organist of saint Eustache in Paris, Thomas Hospital, and then in June, on June the 26th, again online, I shall be giving a kind of demonstration talk of the sounds which survive from the organs of Bach's time in Germany. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching, and once again, very many thanks to this evening's participants.